Sí, sí, sí. Sí, Sí, a lo que tienen su... No, 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 durante la charla casi me voy a mover más. Ah, vale. Entonces, ya con el Ah, ya arrancamos. Ok. Me dijeron en inglés, buenos días a todos, <laughs> pero le cambio. Ok. So, good morning, everyone. My name is Jesús Rodríguez. I'm responsible for Tectronics for, for Latin America region. And the idea for this, for this presentation is to share a little bit about how to use the oscilloscope. Ok. Our goal is to present how to use the oscilloscope and also how to do signal decodification. So when we work using, for example, embedded systems, the idea of this type of signals is that maybe you have like an FPGA, and maybe you have like a memory or communication with other devices. So the, the objective, objective of this instrument, the oscilloscope, is to take a look on the signals and to validate if there is some noise and if that noise will affect the communication with other devices. That's the objective of the oscilloscope, okay? So even, even uh, the, the scope that, that I'm gonna be using looks to be different to other platforms, okay? What's the difference between the, the oscilloscopes? Well, the first point is gonna be the bandwidth on the oscilloscope, okay? So for example, the oscilloscopes that you have on, on your lap, The configuration of those instruments, it's going to be like four channels and running up to 100 mex, 100 megahertz. In this case, this box, it's going to operate in up to eight channels. And the frequency range, the, the operation uh, bandwidth of this oscilloscope, it's going gonna, it's gonna to run up to 10 gigs. 10 gigahertz, okay? So why do we need to use a 100 mex or 1 gig, 5 gig, uh, 10 gigahertz oscilloscope? Okay. At the end, at the end, the oscilloscope is gonna, is gonna capture signals. It's going to digitalize signals. So the instrument needs to have like the bandwidth, the sample rate to capture the signal that you need, okay? That's the point. And we need to think about Fourier. We need to think about uh, Fourier and, and, and other things. But the, the important one when I mention um, Fourier is because you need to capture like all the harmonics on your signal. So for example, you need to capture the fundamental and you need to capture all the harmonics for that signal. The instrument otherwise, it's going to operate as a filter. So if the instrument operates as a filter, if the instrument doesn't capture like all of the signals, then there is like a conflict because if you want to capture like a square signal, 
And if the instrument acts as a filter, well, the signal that it's going to be presented on the scope, it's going to be like a sine waveform, okay? So if you want to capture, for example, data, how to select the oscilloscope, okay? So the data rate needs to be twice to, to define the bandwidth. So as an example, if you have like a 100 me megabit per second signal, twice, it's going to be 200 megahertz. So the oscilloscope is going to be the, the, the double, okay? It's going to be 200 megs. Then my question to you is going to be, in USB 2.0, the data rate is going to run up to 180 megabits per second. Let's try to, to, to place there like 500 megs, okay? Then up to which frequency? The, the, the needs to be the selection for this scope. So if the signal is running up to 500 uh, megabits per second, which is the bandwidth that you need for the oscilloscope? Um, the double. The double, then? Uh, 100 gigabit. It's gonna be, in terms of, of frequency, okay? Gigabit. It's gonna be one gig, one okay. gigahertz, okay. Okay. okay? So you're right, okay? okay. It's going to be twice. And, and the selection of the scope on, on that way is to make sure that you will be able to capture the fundamental and up to the third harmonic. Okay, second harmonic, third harmonic. Okay, and on that way, the instrument will plot the waveform as, it, as the signal is. Otherwise, the signal will be affected by the oscilloscope. Okay, so if this oscilloscope is running up to 10 giga, gigahertz, okay, then which is the max data rate that can be supported with this oscilloscope? Five gigabits. Up to five gigabits, gigabits bits per second. As an example, well, it could be like a USB 3.0 running up to five gigs per second. So that, that would be like the the selection, no, the, the, the max data rate that can be supported with this box, okay? So that's the first part. And the second part is how many channels? Well, the, the quantity of channels uh, could be based on, on what you wanna see. So for example, if you want to see the oscilloscope to check if the signal will be affected because of the noise, because of the EMI, because of, a solder point that can be like uh, uh, incorrectly done, okay? At the end, the signal will be affected. So you need to, to check how the signal is being created, how the signal travels up to the end destination, and, and how the signal uh, gets into that point, how the destruction occurs on that signal. At the end, the communication will can be understood or otherwise, if the signal is affected, uh, if you need to do some corrections to, to your to your signal, okay? Uh, so the, the oscilloscope is to, to validate if the signal integrity is good or not, okay? That's the point. And, and if you wanna check on the near end and end at the far end, then you need to check one channel and one channel, two channels. If you are gonna be uh, try to, to decode like an SPI, an I2C signal. Those could be two channels, three channel signals. And, and, uh, yeah. and, and that could be the reason to, to be using like a four channel oscilloscope, six channel oscilloscope, or up to eight channel oscilloscope. Okay. So, so that's like the first part to select which is the, the, the bandwidth on your oscilloscope, how many channels would you need no, to, to validate your, your, your signals? But let's try to use the oscilloscope. So the first part when you are trying to use an oscilloscope is that you need to make a connection to this group compensation point on the oscilloscope. Even this oscilloscope looks to be like a big box, uh, like more for research. Even the basic oscilloscopes will have this, this connection. And this is a compensation point, okay? So the first part is to get this connection, and I'm gonna make a default setup, okay? And we are using, ah, no, 
the receipt. Okay. So I click on the false setup, and after that, the instrument will remove all the previous settings. Okay. Then I already did the connection to this compensation point, reference point. Okay. And I'm going to make this, this connection. Okay. Um, there are some proofs with just BNC connectors. In this case, it's a different type of connector. Okay. This is like a box. Okay. And the reason for this is because it's like a smart proof. The, the proof will be detected by the scope. Okay. And the scope is going to tell you which is like the model, which is the serial number. Okay. And running this will help you to, to do this compensation. So the, the proof is like has been done with a resistor and a capacitor. It's an RC uh, connection, okay? Circuit. So in the basic proofs, you need to adjust, okay, the proof. But this process is gonna be like automatical using this type of boxes, okay? So if, if I make like this auto set, and I'm gonna try to, to make some adjustments like this, okay? In, okay. The idea when you are trying to use the oscilloscope uh, in this connection is to avoid like a capacity capacitive uh, effect. Okay, if the signal looks to be good in a square waveform, it's good. But the instrument will determine if the signal is good or not. So I just need to make like a double click on this system configuration for channel one and then click on compensate the proof. And it says, hey, make sure that you are right connected on this compensation point. Okay, so I'm there and I'm gonna click on this compensate the proof. The instrument is gonna start running this, this compensation. And right at the end, it says, okay, the signal pass or not. And there is like a, a failure. Maybe because I was like making, uh, with the instrument already like a stop, no? This proof fails. I'm gonna try to change this, this proof. Maybe there is a conflict on this one, okay? So there is like a diagnostic and also compensation of this proof, okay? Let's try this. Here is the signal. Here is the, the ground connection. And finally, I'm going to try to make this proof compensation. OK, it's running. So right at the end, the instrument is going to say, OK, the, the, the proof is working or not. And maybe the reason for this is because the instrument says, well, you need to make sure that the instrument uh, gets like the warming time. And the warming time is like you need to wait like 20 minutes until the electronics of this box get stabilized, stabilized, no? And, and until that moment, well, the compensation is gonna be correct, okay? But let's try with this with this signal signal capture, okay? That's like the first point. We didn't wait for this um, warm time, and, and that's the reason why this compensation dot, uh, didn't work, okay? But let's try to make some capture bit noisy captures, but just to, to start the conversation, okay? Mm, for example, let's try to move to measure the signal. So this is a circuit that I want to measure, okay? <clears throat> All the time that you are going to start like a new a new capture, you need to do this default setup, okay? And, and then you can do the adjustments for the vertical scale and horizontal scale, okay? So it could be using this position, for example, to move the signal, to move the signal right in the correct position, okay? And then I'm gonna try to adjust the vertical like this, okay? That could be one, one way to make it. The other option on this type of oscilloscope, you can do, or you can make it like manually, no? using this, this touch, you no? Uh, out there, there is a small oscilloscope with this, with this option in, in touch screen mode, okay? 
So when we are working like in, in the in industrial facilities, there are some cases when the customer doesn't want to use like the touch. Okay. On that case, they can connect like a mouse or they can do like uh, the use of these, these uh, knobs. So you can click on this touch off just to avoid the, the use of this of this tool. In in some educational centers, there are some professors professors who are gonna be asking on, hey, how can I remove the auto set? We can do that. Okay. We can send like send like a like a script just to avoid the use of this auto set. So it could be used. Okay. Okay. So the signal, when you capture the, the, the signal on the on the oscilloscope, the oscilloscope is gonna try to capture like an, a specific event. In that specific event, is gonna be like a rising edge. Okay, what's gonna be the rising edge? When the signal changes from the low value to a high value, the oscilloscope automatically will try to detect this signal conversion moving from low to high voltage. Okay, and and the name of this feature to capture like a specific event is a trigger. The trigger is going to be this configuration to set which is the type of activity of the signal to collect that signal. So when, okay. when that event occurs, that signal will be presented right at the middle of the, of the oscilloscope. Okay. So as an example, the trigger level now is going to be, is going to be presented right at this, at this, at this place. OK, right here, if I place here. The oscilloscope will center the signal right there. OK, so the trigger will be centered on this area. OK, and, and right here, the oscilloscope says, well, this transition from the low value to the high value occurs on this middle. OK, so right there is the position of that trigger, but the trigger can be used in a different way. So as an example, if, if, if you are taking data, you are like, a, if, if you need to capture like from a embedded system and you have like communication sending like commands, okay? Those could be based on Iceberg C, SPI, at the end, electronical languages, no? Serial protocols. So the oscilloscope can say, okay, I can trigger, right in a bus, in an I2C signal, in an SPI signal, in a USB signal, when a specific value or data arrives. When that data arrives, I will trigger to stop my capture. Okay, that could be an option. And other options, for example, if you are trying to do like some the embedding, some debugging, okay? Debugging is like a, a, if you are trying to detect failures, on your system, okay? You can do this. Try to capture, as an example, uh, a glitch. So if you detect a pulse that doesn't match with the clock, if there is like a quick transition, but it's just noise, try to capture just that signal, no? Or if there is like a voltage level that can rise up to the five volts value, please try to detect just those specific cases and I'm gonna set instead of pulse width, it could be a run. And this run is when a pulse arrives, but it can reach up to the correct uh, voltage level. Please tell me, advice that that occurs. So the oscilloscope is not just to capture like a signals. No, it's to try to capture like when there is like a noise on your signal, when there is like a, a an effect an affection on your system. Okay, so the, the, the objective of this oscilloscope is going it, it, to validate just the signal integrity, if the signal is good or not. Okay, but when you are using embedding systems, the idea is to try the data, analyze the data, even to understand the information that is there on, on those packages. Okay, so try to decode the signal as a sniffer, something like that. OK, is there any question? No, OK. Which one is the digital box? 
Okay. With the channel. So, uh, okay. The oscilloscope can be used with the analog channels or digital channels. Okay. Uh, that proof is going to be out there. At the oh. end, I can show that 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 proof. But what's the idea? The difference between the analog analog channels and digital channels. The analog one is going to show like all the noise on your signal. No, as an example, if I try to capture like a um, digital signal, I'm going to move back right in a moment, but just to show this. Okay. Uh, ah, nice. Stuff. So, for example, right at the top, it's like the digital signal. Well, because it is like a, a pattern of data. Okay. And, and if you want to show the analog visualization, mm -hmm. you you will be presenting like all the noise there on the signal, okay? But if you ask the same to a digital chip uh, signal, let me try to show that. It should be right here. No, I'm gonna change the signal. Utility demo and serial balls, I score C, recall the demo. Okay, like like here. Okay, so the digital visualization of a digital channel, it's gonna be like the signals on green. Okay, the the digital channel will show you just if the signal has a high level or a low level. But there is no way to see like all the noise in there. Okay, so if there is like a glitch. If there is like anomaly, the oscilloscope will not detect those cases. Then why do I need to use the digital channels? Because the quantity of channels will be higher than the analog channels. For example, in this case, this oscilloscope can run up to 64 digital channels and just up to eight analog channels. Okay, that would be the difference. Okay, well, let's move back and I'm going to try to make these adjustments. Okay, so. The first part is going to be like this trigger. The trigger is this this way to set like the, the, the place when the signal changes from a low level to high level, no? And right there is the signal. So tell me, if this is like a pattern of data, digital channels, O and ones, okay? So how would you qualify these signals from zero to 10? Which is the, the qualification for this? What would you say? Six. Six, okay. Which other? What do you think? This is a digital signal that could be zeros or ones. So which is the evaluation for this one? Six, 10, five, huh? Be 10. Okay, he said 10. And maybe it's because it's clear to see like the transition from O's to ones, no? Could be, but she said, hey, but there is like a capacity uh, effect there on the signal is a bit noisy, no? And that's the idea on the oscilloscope to evaluate if the communication will be taken correctly, if the communication can be taken by the by the one that will receive all the transition of data. So if that that other device understands the signal, that's good. Okay. So that's the way to act on the on the oscilloscope. So take a look on the on the screen. Um, below on the screen, right uh, on the on the right position, right here, okay, over here, there is like the quantity of acquisition that has been taken until now, okay. So until this moment, the oscilloscope is up to six hundred acquisition, okay. Something like that, 600. Now it's about 1,000. Okay, that's perfect. But let's try to accelerate the instrument. So the the this at the end the oscilloscope is gonna be like a digitizer, taking data, sampling the data to to be presented right on the on the screen. Okay, so it's like a capture, the time, capture, the time. No, so it's there is like Capture space, capture space. Okay. So I'm going to try to accelerate to avoid 
dos dead times, ¿ok? So capture, capture, like a video, something like that. To do that, the oscilloscope should have like these fast acquisition modes. The fast acquisition mode, look to the quantity. So the quantity is reaching like 400,000 acquisitions now, ¿no? Several captures. It's moving too fast. And now the, the way to describe the signal there on the screen is like based in colors. The idea of those colors is to show like in reds, it's going to be like, um, how to say it? Like the, the most population of events. The most frequency, frequent, frequency of the events are going to be presented in reds. So then if there are other events that will occur a few times, okay? So those would be presented in blue. It's like a way to do like a debugging. So the normal operation is in reds. In this case, it's a sequence of data, zeros and ones, okay? And, and if you take a look, all those, all those data, Uh, will follow like a clock. That's the reason why in certain cases it goes like a zero, then a zero to ones, then one, one, one to O, and it's like presenting all the data together, okay? But there should be like a plus. It's difficult to see on that screen, not on this one. I'm gonna try to, to make like a persistence. I can do something different. Let's try to do this. Let's try to default set up, how to set. Let's try to make some adjustments on the timing division, okay? Then fast acquisition, okay? Right there, okay. So the blue color. The blue color is like signal that already exists, okay? They are in there. But the quantity of those events is very limited, okay? Maybe one of 10,000 events will be those in blue. So at the end, it's like a conflict that will exist on this signal. So for example, it's like a certain events that in, in, in some cases, the voltage level can reach up to the correct one, okay? Or there are like other, other cases when The data doesn't follow like a, like the clock. There is like a this construction of this one, but will be like affected right in a moment. It's like a one o one, but those that signal doesn't follow like like this clock. Okay, so it's just like a quick overview of of the failures on your device. Those could be jitter on the signal. What what's gonna be like the jitter? The jitter is like, they doesn't follow like the clock and sometimes occurs before or after the, the, the rising edge of your clock, no? It could be. Or maybe the voltage, voltage doesn't get up to the five volts. So the oscilloscope will do this uh, debugging just to show you like the conflicts on your signal. So then the question is, after looking to this, your evaluation, evaluation will change maybe from 10, from 10 will change to other, other value? Yeah, actually, it is uh, very obvious that uh, there are uh, zero errors mm -hmm. with the blue signal. So I, I think that a uh, circuit is not working like I wanted. And, and at the end, those are like issues on your device. <laughs> so there are some signals that are like in an incorrect um, position, no? It's not working correctly. Maybe there are some noise, some affection there. And you need to find why, why, uh, what, what's going to be like the reason for this, for this failure, okay? And, and at the end, what you want to try is to check If your other device will receive the information, will understand the information, otherwise 
depending on the type of system could be how important could be this failure, no? In Mexico, we have like a very automotive vehicles market, no? For, for, for cars. And, and there are a lot to detect those fail failures, okay? Uh, and let's try to think, this failure occurred to your, your lives and your, your car. Maybe the priority of that system is the airbag. Maybe others. No. If those are related to the opposite, maybe this is like, like a big affection. The next point on the use of the to, to be converted to a whole. Okay, to try to do this. Example just to start. This protocol has been done by Bosch on the 60s. And, and it's very slow. Right at the moment, looks to be slow. No, but this is still active. Okay. So let's try to evaluate this signal. So maybe the signal should be with some noise, some rising uh, noises there on this on, on this part. Well, this 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 part. Okay. Let's try to make like a single. Over here could be good or bad. On my simple evaluation, the signal looks to be good because it's clear to see the zeros and the ones. Looks to be fine, okay? But to make sure that the signal has like a good, good job, is doing a good job, okay? The correct way to evaluate is try to decode the signal. So maybe we need to check first, which is the data rate. I'm going to measure, measure the data rate. OK. There. And maybe the peak to peak voltage. But there the instrument will set, hey, the data rate is about 9.6 kilobits per second. OK. So the next part. It's important to mention that the serial buses will show the information as as a single words, okay? So it's like a word, and then then there, there would be like a space, word space, word space, okay? If you take something like like this, something like this, that capture is wrong because you don't have like the the entire word. OK, you need to capture all the board. OK, otherwise the instrument cannot decode that signal. If I do this type of adjustments, OK, let me try to increase the intensity value. This um, there are several words at the end. It's going to be like a conversation between two, two devices. OK, so I have all the words, maybe not all of them but I have this sequence, okay? So the next step is to analyze uh, a, a bus, and I to set to the instrument, which is the type of bus. So this case is gonna be an RS232, perfect. I need to tell to the instrument, which is the data rate. In this case is 9600, okay? And finally, 
I need to set like which is the the value when the the signal changes to a one or to a zero. Okay, so there is like a lane right there, no, a yellow lane, and it says above this this level, those are ones. Below are zeros. Okay, and please try to show the information in ASCII. Okay, so there are like characters, okay? Mm -hmm. And it says, you know, beige, no? It says like, it, it, it needs to capture more data to understand, understand the complete work, okay? So I can take more, more data and I can make like a zoom. And for example, it says enabling, enabling, okay? If you are like a data center or computer center, Maybe you, you are not making this electronic design, but you, need, you just need to check if your commands will get or not into the destination. Okay, so we can take a look below the signal to see this part of the signal means an end character. Okay, that's the first part. And the second part is on which time each word or, or character occurs. So I can set, hey, show me uh, this, like a spreadsheet on, on which timing each word occurs, okay? So it's like the timing reference to say, hey, on this data occurs on this timing. And at the end, the instrument is gonna act as a translator. So the instrument will set, okay, this is the content. The signal means this, but if there is something that the instrument will not understand, then like this column that will set this is errors, okay? And if the instrument will detect like an issue, will tell you, hey, on this part of the of the message, I couldn't I couldn't translate the information, so there is like an issue, okay? And then you can take a look like on the waveform to see if there is like a glitch, if there is some noise, something that affects the communication there. Okay. Is there any question? Uh, well, I have a question. What happens if I want to import the data from my computer? I don't know if they have. Them. So it's going to be like a double click, something like that. Mm -hmm. But the answer is yes. You can. You can take the data. Uh, aquí está. Here it is. So you just click on this table and you can ask to the instrument to save that information in a Excel, in a Excel file. Excel. Or CSV file. Okay. okay. And then they can plug in a USB memory flash or. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Let's try to make this decodification in another type of signal. Okay. On, on this case, it has been like a one channel signal. It has been like, like a really simple signal, okay? Well, let's try to capture like a different one. It's gonna be an I square C signal. Um, have, you, have you heard about this type of signals? How many channels does it has? Do you know? I square C? How many? Yes. Yep. So the answer is two channels. One channel is for data, and one more is for the for the clock. One for data, one for the clock. Okay. The difference the difference versus the the previous one are RS two three two. The RS two three two is going to be like a just a single channel, and you need to inform to the oscilloscope which is the data rate. In this case. You have a data channel and one more like a reference channel to to with a with a with a clock. Okay, but let's try to show this screen. What's it up? How to set? Okay, how to make this? Uh, typically, the instruments, the oscilloscope, will show like the information like all together. No, there is like a new format to separate like the signal. And each one like uh, with their own scale, okay? But well, the topic is 
on, on the description of these signals. So let's try to make this and this in, in a single capture. Okay. One more. Mm, bit more. Okay. Right there. So the the codification. Uh, this serial bus will send like a channel for data and one more for a clock. Okay. So which is the clock? The one in yellow or the one in blue? The one in yellow. In yellow. Uh, and the data, the one in blue. Okay. There is like a conflict on the yellow one because even if the signal is like a clock, I can see that there is like a part that the, the package doesn't follow like this this clock, no? Um, so let me try to, to make this uh, with an arrow. Like right here, it's like taking more more time to configure that 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 clock. Okay, <clears throat> right there. So the instrument, the idea is to make this this collection of data and try to decode to to validate if the signal can be understand it or not. Okay. So I'm going to try to capture more and more data. Mm -mm -mm. Like this, not just one word. So now several, no? And I'm going to say to the instrument, hey, I'm taking the data, but I need to decode the signal. Okay. So in this case, this is an I square C signal. The one in yellow is the clock. The one of data is the blue one. And then the threshold, just to play it like which is the voltage level to change between zeros to ones. Okay. So, on this case, I don't need to say to the instrument which is the data rate because, because there is like a clock a signal, a clock reference. Okay. So, below the signal, there is like a new lane showing like the signal that has been decoded, okay? If I single, and then if I do like a this single capture, I can see right below the waveform uh, that the signal starts with this green uh, lane, vertical lane. Then it says like a, there is like an address to write the data 50, no? Or to, to the address 50. And there is like the data to be transported. Okay. Could be like that point. And we have like this construction of, of the of the data. The difference with the previous one is just like uh the previous one was just an ASCII character. And on this case, we have like a structure. And the structure will show you the the when the signal starts or the data starts, when it ends, an address a uh, write or read instruction and finally the, the the data okay so it has like more and more information okay but let me try to check if there is like a conflict okay on your left there is like a boxes in red mm -hmm. small boxes in red okay over here ah Okay, let's try to make like a soup or with this. Right here. Okay. Those areas in reds, those are like red flags. And the red flag, it's going to be like this indication that something is wrong on that signal. Okay. I'm going to make like a zoom. The signal could be a bit noisy, okay? But even the signal is noisy, it's clear to see that you have like zeros and ones. There is no like a glitch that maybe can cause like this question of, is, is this a zero, is this a one? No. So there is like a good construction of the signal. So when I make this zoom, it says ACK, and, and the, the meaning for that ACK, it's gonna be acknowledge. I'm going to add one more, the results table, okay? And the results table says 
there is like a honest, unexpected non-acknowledge. What does that mean? It means that we are trying to make communication with other device and it was saying like, hey, could you hear me? And the other guy never responds. So he, the other never said, yes, I'm, I'm ready, no? So the instrument will try to send a new package of data and until the other guy responds, until that moment, the instrument will start like all the conversation. So this one later says, not just, this is the meaning of all of the, of the data. It also will advise you if the communication fails because the other never responds or because the data can be taken or can be, doesn't have like a meaning, then the instrument says something is wrong, okay? Um, okay. Um, let's do one more. On this case, we are like taking data to be analyzed by, by the scope. The oscilloscope will do the analysis for signal integrity, will show you if there are some noises and to validate if there is like communication, to, valid, to validate if the message can be, can be understood, okay? Otherwise, it gives you these red flags. That's like part of the, of the analysis that can be done by the oscilloscope. Other examples. These cases has been done for low speed signals running up to 10 megabits per second, 100 megabits per second. And on those cases, you will try to decode the signals. But when you try to do like a high speed signal analysis, as an example for DDR memories, HDMI for those cables for TVs, for that electronic uh, computer below this, this uh, TV, okay? So on, on high speed signals, the analysis will change. It's gonna be like just a quick analysis about the data. And, and, and that's gonna, the name of that analysis is gonna be the eye diagram. Okay, let me try to check if there is like an eye diagram. Uh, I can try to build this this signal as an example. USB recall. Then I'm gonna set plot. This is a USB signal that has been also decoded, but I'm gonna try to build this eye diagram. Okay. So the eye diagram is gonna draw, it's gonna draw all the captures, the zero, zeros to ones, ones to zero, all one in front of the others. Okay. So it will help you to create like an histogram. So you can check if there are some jitters, some noisy, some delays on the construction of the data. So the instrument will say, okay. The eye diagram shows you that the transition doesn't occur right on the clock, no? Will occur before or after the, the, the definition of that point. So the instrument will do that, no? And, and instead of analyzing, doing the analysis to the data, it's just this histogram to show you how is like the, the, the entire waveform uh, on the time, no? On the deviation versus time or versus the amplitude. So it's like analysis more on the waveform, no? And, and that can be done in high speed signals, mainly above one gigabit per second, above, above uh, even 500 megs, like in USB 2.0. Uh, starting there, you can do this type of analysis, no? But also the oscilloscope can be used, for example, for power applications. So uh, this, this other example is if you want to do like a harmonics analysis or, or how efficient could be like a DC to DC converter, AC to DC converter, uh, the analysis for a motor uh, trying to control, uh, a driver trying to control the a motor, so the instrument will capture. And that's the reason also for, for several channels. On each phase to capture voltage and current, no? Then taking the, the current waveform, try to calculate which is the harmonics, more for power measurements, no? 
And where is like the, the fundamental, which are like all the harmonics. And at the end, based on a, on a specification, does it covers or not, um, pass or fails, and uh, a, a, a standard for compliance testing, no? So the oscilloscope can, can have like different type of tools. All depends if the customer is like related with electronic design, signal analysis, uh, power analysis, no? Uh, signal integrity. So there are like different type of licenses to add these, these complementals on the, on the oscilloscopes, okay? So this is the end of my presentation. I wanna uh, answer like any questions that you have. So please let me know. Okay, question. In, 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 um, mentioned uh, about a uh, point uh, composition. A point composition. Uh, what is the point composition in the oscilloscope? Mm -hmm. So, so the oscilloscope can has this compensation point um, on the right of the channels. Mm -hmm. That could be one position. In this case, it's on this part. Okay. okay, so here you have like this ground uh, reference, the reference, uh -huh. the the, uh, the square signal, which are the values for that square signal, but you have the signal and the reference. Okay. Right here okay. is, is the place to to, to place the, the, the proofs. Okay. And the compensation needs to be done on each one of your proofs. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any other question? Thank you. So the the later today, okay. I'm gonna make like also another presentations. Uh, one is gonna be for fundamentals on the use of spectrum anal analysis. Okay, the oscilloscope will measure on PCB devices inside the electronic, but if there are a reason to have like an antenna, if there are like some wireless signals, you will continue the analysis with a spectrum analysis, analyzer, okay? Mm -hmm. So the oscilloscope will measure uh, time versus amplitude, okay? The spectrum analyzer will analyze frequency versus amplitude. The, frequent, the, the spectrum analyzer will, will do channel analysis. As an example, uh, the, the radio station or TV station or Wi-Fi uh, channel, all of them has a channel. So the spectrum analyzer will check if the signal is or not inside the channel, okay? And then we'll analyze if the data can be also taken by the, by the objective, no? The receiver. So in that conversation, we are going to bring this spectrum analyzer. We will do some captures from the from the air. OK, and there would be another another conversation about the challenges uh, to measure electronic devices inside the cars, inside the automotives. OK, so the main topics are going to be also for serial buses, but there is like a new one for automotive Ethernet. And, and the reason to use like high speed uh, buses is because those screens inside the cars, because you want to show videos and those things. And the other reason is because of uh, radars. So radars to capture, there is like a car in front of you or one person in front of you. So it will demand to take like analysis of data like all the time. So you need to transfer like high speed uh, data rates, no? That so thank you guys thank you for for, for being on this call. okay last question and uh, about uh, to avoid uh to avoid in order in order to avoid um noise noises that we don't want uh -huh. in our time now, um about the environment that we are using to do that uh measures uh what are the recommendations to to make that uh, measure, uh, what is the correct form to avoid the noise? And okay. not just in the oscilloscope, uh, also in 
or a space of work. So typically the proofs uh, needs like a direct connection just to, to avoid those noises, but make sure to connect your ground to use a small cable, no? The majority of the oscilloscope will have like a, the ref the the ground reference like um, the same one for each for each channel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are some cases when the users try we try to remove the ground. Okay, like like this, no, to, to mm -hmm. separate this. Mm -hmm. So this will be the reason to add noise to your measurement. So make sure to connect the ground on each one of your cable or your proofs. Okay, try to use them. Okay, uh, even at the end. All the ground is like together, no? Try to use this cable. There are some cases, for example, with uh, serial protocols like CAN. Those signals are USB. Those are differential signals. And the differential signals will be taken using, instead of a passive group, it's going to be a differential group, okay? To avoid, avoid noise. But the reason also for, the, for, for noise on your signal could be EMI emissions, okay? The PCB will act like an antenna, taking data, sending information out there. No, uh, impedance conflicts because the, maybe the lane on the PCB will be like bigger in some places, so that will affect the the, the impedance, the connectors, the solder points. Those could be the reasons to add noise on your signals. Okay, so that's it. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, so this thing can do the password transform to do the frequency analysis? Yes. Oh. And thank you for adding this. Let me try to show something. So tell me with something. What's going to be the, the FFT in an oscilloscope? What would show you? The frequency on my side. The, the frequency response, uh -huh. okay? And it will start always in DC. Okay. So as an example, I have here like a signal. Okay. There is like a signal. It can I can do like this math to add fast Fourier transform. But take a look on this. Oh, because the fast Fourier transform will show you always starting in DC. And depending on the horizontal scale, then the the frequency will end based on your horizontal scale okay so these type of platforms particularly for emi analysis and other things you can do something different as an example i can do like a, a spectrum analysis a spectrum view but in, in, if, instead of taking data from dc i can set like the specific frequency that I want to that, that I want to analysis. As an example, I can set like the center frequency on 200 megs, no, with a with a span of 10 megs. So okay. the instrument will continue taking the the same horizontal scale. I can see like the data pattern, okay. And I can show a specific space of frequency. No, I can see in 100 megs. No, how are like the harmonics? And I can move to other part. No, so this is for power integrity. And a good reference for this, uh, the 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 major reason for the EMI emissions could be because of the transition of zeros to ones. So, for example, instead of Looking to the spectrum analysis all, all the time, okay? You can ask to the instrument A. I want to see on this specific frequency, but not all the time, just when we have like a zero, when we have a one, or specifically when we have this transition to zero to one. On this transition, I want to see the spectrum analysis right there. So that's the reason why we are adding this spectrum analysis on the scope. Instead of a fast Fourier transform. Oh, okay. okay. So, so thank you guys. So I hope you that you enjoy this this conversation. So any question, let me know, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
ಕಂಪ್ಲೇಂಟ್ ಅದ 